B hind helicopter. Today we'll learn basic procedures to start and take off this bird. Me 24 is a two seat. Turn to the right side and switch on both batteries on the right electric deck. Activate PO 750A power inverter. Close the door by clicking the door handle with the mouse. Or use left control plus pressurize the cockpit by opening the pressure valve on the left side. Release the main rotor shaft brake by lowering the turn to the left and up a bit and locate the fire protection panel. Move master switch and fire extinguisher switches. Switch on service tanks, fill cutoff valves, crossfeed and transfer pumps for all tanks. If you are equipped with external tanks, switch the appropriate external tanks rocker. At the next step, we'll start the ox Now, we are ready to start the APU. While APU is spinning up, please monitor. Exhaust gas temperature rises, but not exceeds 880. Voltage is not below 18 volts. The green after on light should go out during the first 30 seconds after the start. When APU goes idle, check if green APU normal RPM lamps is lit. Green normal oil press lamp yeah, yeah, yeah. is lit. EGT readings don't exceed 720. All right, let's fire it up. It's the right time to start main helicopter. Immediately lower the left engine stop lever. Failing to do so, we'll terminate the normal starting procedure. Use right control plus by job inconvenient. The engine should come to idle power in no more than 60 seconds. Monitor the following parameters during spin-up. Green auto on and amber starter on lights up. Steady RPM increase and main rotor blade starts to move. Oil pressure at 45% of turbine RPM is not lower than 1 kg per square centimeter. Amber starter on light should turn off at 60-65% of RPM. Green auto on light should maintain the lead state no more than 33 seconds. Warning, during each engine startup, it's forbidden to move aircraft control sticks, engine RPM handle, or swing engine start selector rocker to another engine. When the left engine goes idle, repeat the procedure for the right engine. Select right engine by switching the engine start rocker to right position first. Lower the right engine stop lever to down position. Check warning lights, RPM, temperature increase, and oil pressure gauges for normal readings. Wait until engines run at idle for one minute. Note. In the case of prolonged APU warm-up or engine test runs, engage the APU generator to provide battery recharge using the okay, APU sir, generator 30. switch on the right electric panel. Do not forget to temporarily switch it off during the engine start phase to avoid possible APU overload. Okay. RPM. Activate dust filters prior to increasing torque. Dust filters on. It's to increase RPM until engine oil temperature reaches 30 degrees and main gearbox temperature below minus 50. Place the mouse cursor over the collective stick grip. To press the right mouse button and rotate the grip marked gas clockwise using a mouse wheel. You can use at the moment the main rotor speed reaches 95 plus minus 2. Engage main generators on the right electric panel. Watch the right electric turn both PO750A and power from battery switches back to switch the main 115 and 36 volts transformer. Switch on both rectifiers. 
Stop APU turbo engine pressing stop APU button on the left side. Power on the guidance system by switching comp system rocker to the upper. Power on both vertical gyro systems. Now we have to test the gyros using ADI and pitch roll indicators. First, depress for one or two seconds corresponding cage buttons for both vertical gyros on the main instrumental deck. Watch both thread gyro warning lamps above the buttons go off. Also, notice red markers on ADI pitch and roll indicator go off. ADI indication should coincide with current aircraft pitch and roll parking angles. Okay, here we go. Hey, it worked. Set adjust tab switch to on. It worked. Now the red warning lamp located to the right diminishes and zero indicator bar settles near the center according to the current ambient air density. That indicates the normal walking state of SPUU-52. Note that at near sea level altitudes, low or moderate temperatures, when air density is high, the bar may settle to the right of center. In the conditions of low air density, the bar may stay in the leftmost position. In the next step, we'll engage autopilot control channels. Use backspace key to hide the sticks and obscuring cockpit elements in the case of autopilot panel is not reachable by the mouse. You may also make the left mouse click on the forward edge of the seat to produce the same action. To press three green on buttons to activate yaw, roll and pitch control channel. Press backspace again to show hidden sticks back. Look to the left and power on all radio and communication systems. Switch radio altimeter, Doppler, blink, radio warning power and IFF system to on. In three minutes after the guidance system is powered, you may align it. Look to the bottom panel. Check if the three position mode selector is set to max. Then, to press alignment button for 3 seconds. If you need to strafe your view down, use right control plus right. Set ARK 15 panel mode switch to come position. Power on the ARK U2 directional finder panel located under your left elbow. Switch air conditioner mode to condition on the right panel under your right elbow. This will... Now we're ready to start taxi. Proceed All right. with the following. <laughs> Release parking brake, left shift plus W. Push the cyclic stick forward smoothly and increase the pitch of the main rotor by gently lifting the collective stick. Lower the collective stick when the helicopter starts to move. Use short anti-top pedal pushes to adjust movement direction. Maintain slow forward motion with longitudinal movements of cyclic control stick and wheel brakes when needed. Do not exceed the speed of 20 km per hour. Enable control position of a proceed taxi along the path to the runway. We're doing it. Such a weird thing to to drive around. Well, I have no idea how the Taliban did it so easily. You have entered the runway. Turn left and land the forward wheel along the central line.
We have to execute the harrow power check before reach flight. Gently pull the control stick back and right. Then smoothly pull up the collective stick until the helicopter hangs its wheels 1-5 meters above the ground. Push the right pedal proportionally to compensate for oh, the shit. dog and constant tendency to make the left on. Control the longitudinal and lateral movements of the helicopter with the cyclic stick. Yeah, I don't know about hovering. Check whether the main rotor speed is not less than 93% at hovering. Gently move the collective down and lower the helicopter to the ground until steady on wheels. Okay, okay, it's on the ground. It's on the ground. It's on the ground. It's on the ground, guys. It's on the ground. There you go. Okay, chill. Chill the fuck out. Stop the helicopter, dude. Oh my god. Dude, this thing won't stop. Stop, dude. Alright, fuck it. I'm taking off. Yeah, I don't know about this. I mean, the thing, it feels so weightless. Feels so weightless. Flying. Let's get ourselves to the mountains over there.
thought there was something I could do to get it onto a uh, auto tracking for my gun. Something underneath the site. Something on the side. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Auto. And now I'm going to die. No? That's good. That's good. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine, guys. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Just, you know, just normal little right turn, Russianness going on. Required. No, no right turn. Okay. Perfect. No. Okay. Well, let's lower the gear while we're here. Might as well. Yep. Looking good. Woo! Nailed it. Perfect. Perfect landing, guys. Perfect landing. Some tells me this module's not uh, the best program in DCS. Alright, let's hop into some multiplayer. <laughs> 